Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom Ray, and on today's episode, I get the chance to meet an illustrator and a writer. They are a couple, and they create a webcomic called Background Noise. At backgroundnoisecomic.com, you can check out all of their stuff. Uh, they have prints for sale, things that they do, and of course, their autobiographical webcomic that they do. Now, John is the person who illustrates them, and he has a history of, uh, he works for, right now, works for the Kubert School of Art. He's one of the teachers there, but he has a history of working in flash animation for places like Nicktoons, and we actually talk about one of the shows that he did animated, or he was the art director for. You'll remember when he says it, because I totally did, and it was funny because he thought I, I wouldn't remember. So we talk about that, we talk about his history in the industry, going through, and how he decided to start making webcomics, even though he had worked with some major companies. And Lisa is a writer, so it's a perfect pairing, and the, the, she writes the comics, or they write them together, and she also is writing books and has a series of books she's coming out and uh, coming out with. And we also talk about how she plans pitches for things. And also, of course, there was going to be more going to cons, pitching their ideas to people that they met at the Comic Cons. But since that's not going to happen, I asked her, what is her plan for pitching these comics or the webcomic that they do? Because webcomics aren't necessarily a lucrative thing, but they're very popular and they're very accessible and easy for everyone to do. So how do you take them further? We talk a bit about that. So as a couple that is both an artist and a writer, it's a great pairing and they make the background noise comic. Don't forget to go to my website, tomraiswebsite.com to see more about the show, subscribe to the podcast, check out my daily comic, and also my daily, well, my weekly vlog now of how I am supporting myself by selling collectibles that I find so I can continue to do my art and be in control of my own time and business. So that's at TomRaysWebsite.com. Go there for more. Subscribe to the show. Now on to today's interview with John and Lisa of Background Noise Comic. Lisa Burnage. I'm John Hazard. We co-create a comic called Background Noise Comics. We are in Brooklyn. Okay, you're you're in New York. In the, yes. Uh, and how long have you guys lived there? We've lived in Brooklyn for about six years, mm -hmm. maybe coming up on seven. Coming up on seven. And uh, we've lived in New York like our whole lives. Okay. And uh, how long have you known each other? We have been together for. Uh, almost 13 years. Wow. More than that. No, I think because we have to, we met when my younger son was two mm -hmm. and he's 19. So that's how we know. So that would be 17 years. Oh, no, we've been together for 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been together a while. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but no, you guys okay. figured it out. It's an awesome question like that we joke, have because, joke, yeah. because like we never like really had a set like anniversary or whatever. Yeah, right? we're not actually technically married, so um, we don't have like an anniversary or anything. Yeah, when we moved to Brooklyn, we just decided that it was – that we were just gonna start saying husband and wife because boyfriend and girlfriend after a while just yeah, starts just sounding so, sounds silly. Yeah, yeah. I love. Yeah. Wait, you guys, you guys just said okay, we're just gonna say husband and wife now. Yeah, we just. Started I kind of love that. Work. That's yeah. actually really cool. <laughs> it makes it simpler. The kids did the same thing. Like, well, my kids just started calling John their stepfather at like when they were. Well, you know, Zane was like two when we got together. So, and my older son was. Four, so they were pretty little and so it was just easier for them to explain it you know mm -hmm. so they would just they I think in first grade Blaze started to call John his stepfather yeah and I, yeah. I have two kids who are older and they live upstate so uh, your background is you um, are the writer and I'm pointing at you like people maybe they can see me right, pointing at you right. but but yeah. you're the writer on the comic and you're the artist on the comic so how did that how did that all come about on the webcomic that you guys have been doing 
it's it's not quite that cut and dry. I mean, I am a writer by trade, and John is an artist by trade, although a lot of times, but I'm also a creative director, um, so a lot of times I write the comic, a lot of times John edits the co edits what I write, John writes the comic sometimes, and then I edit what he writes, and I often creative direct what he actually draws. Mm -hmm. So he, even though he draws it, I have a lot of comments on how it should look. So so it's it's much more collaborative than sort of straight up saying one is one and one is the other. Okay. Well, and, and with the, situa the living situation that you're in, I mean, it's like you guys can bring it up all day and just kind of go, you know, I was thinking this. Like, it's you can spitball it so much we, more loosely. We can spitball it all day. And a lot of times we're in bed at night and we're kind of like, what are we doing tomorrow? And we have the co we, we figure out the, co the comic for the next day before we go to bed. And then we both have to recite we have to remember it and sometimes we do and sometimes we don't <laughs> but we do um we do spitball it pretty um in pretty strange places yeah, yeah and we also um like we we were writing it on um in google docs so that we could both edit back and forth yeah um she recently switched us to scrivener uh uh just because you know we're trying to do more uh, writing and it, you know, it mm. formats things like a real script and right. does some other things. It's not uh, actually as good a it's collaborative not a, it's not tool, a collaborative, yeah. You know, yeah, which is something they could work on. But, um, right. but, but yeah. So, so we, you know, have it the scripts and sometimes some ideas online, uh, you know, so we can go back and forth. Okay. And what was what was the thought process like? Why did you go, we should make a webcomic? Like, it's not necessarily the most lucrative thing to do, and it's yeah. definitely a consuming thing. Yeah. Um, well, we had always wanted to work on something together, and we had started projects, and then, you know, either they become too complicated or, or, or we kind of can't figure them out. And um, we had always been trying to make something happen. And then one day uh, I had an idea for like a one shot thing and I just drew it with a Sharpie uh, and, um, uh, you know, showed her this one comic and kind of at the same time we were both like, and you know, the, the, the comic was the basic art that you still see sometimes in the comic, which is us on this couch with our laptops in front of us, you know, we're sitting in our living room, usually we're like, because that's the way we really are, like yeah. all the time working on our computers, either on work work or our our own writing or whatever. And um, and so I just drew us like that, and then we were both like, we could just use the same picture and just put in different words every day and just like do it every day. Mm -hmm. um, which is one of the reasons why a lot of people look at our comic, you know, one of the first things they say is, uh, the characters don't have mouths, why don't they have mouths? Right. And the thinking was, is that I, the originally pictures were never going to change. It was just going to change the dialogue. Oh, okay. And, um, and, you know, so it was just like, you know, I, I'm just not doing math, so I don't have to change the expression or whatever. And we were going to both just stoically just be sitting there looking at our laptops and kind of talking. And the title of the thing, background noise, the idea is that life is happening and we're just like focused on our screens. Yeah. Um, but we both got kind of more ambitious with storytelling and wanted to, you know, it, it's about our lives. Yeah, yeah. So it just kind of like fanned out. So now we go around everywhere and do everything in the comic. Right. But we still, I still don't draw the mouths. Yeah. And, yep. and, the, and at the beginning it was just two panels. And I think for the first like three or four, more than that, maybe like six months, it was just a two panel. It was just like a one, two punch. And then, like slowly, the stories got a little bit more complicated, and we just needed a little bit more canvas. Mm -hmm. You know, we're cramming a lot of words into those balloons, and we realized that you know we can do whatever we want. We can make them four panels if we want. Right. And now we even make them six panels sometimes. Which is going to be a pain when it goes to printing. But right. Right. I yeah. Feel like six panels. Right. Sometimes. And I right. saw uh, on your website you had you had mentioned that you're uh, you're planning on doing a comic book, but you haven't done one yet. So I was wondering. Uh, yeah, yeah, we were we were kind of geared up to we were we had been invited to go to um, MegaCon in Orlando. Oh, 
And so we were we were planning on going. We were planning on getting a book done by then. And so that we got invited in like January or February, and then the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. So we were kind of doing it, and then it sort of seemed like, well, maybe we should. It just we just lost our steam in the midst of. Like, is the world going to end? Like, do we care if we have a comic book? <laughs> and so, um, so we sort of, we sort of lost a little bit of steam. And you know, we're, we're it's definitely on our list to try to get done ASAP. Um, we're just uh, not sure how we're going to do it. Okay. Like, like, are we going to self-publish? Are we going to do? There's some other sort of avenues that we've sort of been exploring. Pitching to publishers. Pitching to publishers. Which we're hoping to do at cons. Right, right. So, so that's where we are. That was going to be my question on it. Like, if you if you were to pitch it to publishers, how would you go about it? But you're saying you at the con, you would have done it there. We could have, or you know, we we have we actually have a pitch. I wrote a pitch already. Okay. Uh, so it's just a matter of kind of. You know, the, the vision that I have for the first book is kind of a almost like a creative journey in addition to just the first year of comics because it was really where we were kind of getting our sea legs mm -hmm. for how the comic was going to work. And, um, you know, as different um, thematic th themes came up, we started, to, we you know, we, we started to see different sort of narrative arcs. And I wanted to sort of talk a little bit about that and sort of, you know, it's it's sort of the it's sort of the basis for where what we do now, and sort of like we just told you, the evolution from us sitting stationary on the couch with like life like kind of being around us in the background, to a little bit more of an expansive vision of you know you know what our life is like. We included more of our our family. You know, we've got my mother, my dead mother as a character. You know. Who kind of comes and goes, um, and so some of those themes that kind of came up, and you know, some people people really sort of resonate with certain themes that we do. Um, if, for example, whenever John likes to, or he doesn't like to, but he does end up doing a few, um, he does go into sort of he he dives a little bit deeper into the mental health issues, mm -hmm. and people really find that very comforting to hear that there are other people who are experiencing similar issues and they really appreciate his honesty and his like vulnerability like that he like anxiety and depression things like yeah. that. yeah hmm. and and also about artistic um a lot of artist you know artistic anxiety and feeling like feeling like an artistic failure which i'm sure we all sort of you know kind of appreciate that sort of constant like scraping to get something done and feeling like it's never quite enough and yeah. uh so, uh, so you know, we're going to sort of do a little bit of a mini essay to introduce each of them. So I, I have to, I have to write them. <laughs> well, so it, there we go. <laughs> was was it ever the plan to add that kind of dynamic to it, adding the anxiety and the you know the the feelings uh, that you were just describing into the comic? Like, did you ever expect to be doing that in it, or was it? I mean. Was it going to be just more of kind of a fun romp, and then it kind of turned into that, like as a form of expression? Uh, well, around the time that we started doing the comic, um, I had started doing kind of a T-shirt shop of my own, and, um, and and I was trying to kind of do some art uh, about depression and anxiety. Okay. Um, and I mean, the 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 comic really is uh, about what we're going through and and you know what what we do and you know like she was saying you know that we're like lay in bed and like or like what's going to happen right you know, what are we going to do for the comic tomorrow um uh unfortunately we don't have a buffer of comics you know sort of sitting ready to be published yeah we really bit day by day because it really is about what's going on you know i don't think there's kind of no way we can kind of like get ahead unless we stopped publishing them, you know, for a while and held on to some, yeah. you know, like took a hiatus or something. We just started doing it, you know, do a comic, put it online, and we've just been going for, you know, over two years now, just kind of doing it. I mean, it's not daily anymore. Uh, now it's more like every other day um, because we have other things we want to do. But um, uh, it, it, you know, it's very true you know i mean there's things in there that are made up 
there's a cat character in it, Danny, who is actually a neighbor's cat. He's not our cat. Okay. Um, so, you know, but he's a fun character and, you know, so he's a talking cat who comes in. And, I was going to say, it also talks, so I assumed that part was made yeah, up. <laughs> yeah, he, he doesn't talk, but he, but he is, you know, like friendly to me and like comes over and visits me from our neighbor's yard. Um, so, you know, there's, and, and, you know, I mean, I, I'm a big, like, uh, I'm into like all sorts of nerdy things. So it's just fun for me to try to sneak geek culture things in there. Or, you know, like she said, she, you know, likes to do things about like talking to her mother as a ghost. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, we did one recently about fairies and it's, but, and it was, based on a real thing that happened to us where we were in, in some woods. We, we, we just came back from a vacation in Maine where we were in a forest where artists, it was an artist colony and artists build fairy houses. And so we were like, what if we could be small in these little fairy houses? Oh. So we did a comic about that, you know? So it was like, if we want to, you know, we'll put fairies in there, but there's always, you know, kind of a string of truth to it. You know, when she's talking to her mother as a ghost, you know, she's always, it's conversations that I'm sure she's having, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's always rooted in reality. We were gonna talk about personal things and really dive into, you know, some of our own anxieties and and feelings that were a little bit left more private. I, I don't think we initially thought we were gonna do that. I think that sometimes um, we just um, would have a a, a day where something would just be so shitty and we would just like have to get it out. Yeah. And this became this like nice little capsule capsule of artistic expression where we were able to kind of, you know, almost have this immediate, this immediate expression of something that was really feeling very tangible at that moment. And then plus as we started, you know, because as we posted stuff on Instagram, and Facebook, you know, it's, you, you really do get a lot of another level of immediate gratification and people really, really, really were so, um, were so, um, interested and, in, you know, really reacted to, a, to that kind of content that we started to feel a little bit less scared about doing it. Mm -hmm. So a lot you know, of people relate to it. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was very scary at the beginning to sort of say things that, um, it, a lot of times, you know, it's it's we'll we'll write a comic and I'll turn to him and say, should we really do this? And he'll be like, okay, why not? And we do it, and then people, you know, it's always a little bit less scary afterwards. But you know, I think that the the most scary ones are some of the ones that people really seem to like the most. Yeah, they they love it when we have fights. They love it when we have fights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those were very they really popular want comics. those comics, and and we do have plenty of fights. We don't do enough comics about them. Yeah. So yeah. someday when there's a dip in viewership, you're just gonna one of you is gonna be thinking, how can I start a fight that we can write about? Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll, we'll, it's you'll not a you'll figure it out. <laughs> it's not a problem. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. And then I, I want to go back to, you said you were working on uh, your pitch. And actually I realized I've heard, I've talked to a couple of other people that have talked about creating pitches for their artwork and their comics. What does that entail? Like, I guess I've never done one. Like, what is it even, yeah. what, is there like a special format or, I mean, are you just there kind of going? There is a format. I'm actually, I'm actually a fiction writer as well. And so I've been trying to pitch a novel. So I had, I've been spending, I, I've spent a lot of time working on um, the pitch for the novel. So I was already sort of familiar with it. And I'm also, you know, I've been a, I've been a writer for a long time. So I've been a book doctor. I've, I've been through, I've been in and out of publishing. Right now, I don't work in that industry. Wait, what's a book but, doctor? Uh, book doctor is somebody who goes in and like looks at a book and fixes it. Oh. So I mean, like, I guess it's kind of self-explanatory then. I was like, yeah, it couldn't yeah, just be that. Yeah. yeah, no, it is. It's you know either either like kind of helps developmentally or helps you know with line edits to make sure things are right or hmm. you know writes a proposal for somebody that kind of thing. I, I've done all that kind of stuff in the past. But um, but like a a proposal for an agent or for par for a publisher, they really want a very specific kind of templated kind of letter. They want a little introduction. They want kind of a log line, sort of like you would do if you were pitching a movie. They want um, they want some kind of comparative um, work that your 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 stuff is like. So 
Like, is this like Ross Chast? And I don't know. What did we say? I don't know. We, like we're not great at the I mean, you know, mine is else. my my novel is like Nosferatu meets you know Golden Compass, but you okay. know we haven't quite we haven't quite gotten. I don't think our I don't think our our comps are really great for background noise comics. Well, part of yeah. a, part of our pitch was uh, it, it, it was uh, what if um, Peanut the kids from Peanuts um, grew up and moved to New York and wanted to work for the New Yorker. Yeah, that's kind but of. But then they got yeah. distracted by yeah. like having kids and having jobs and things. Yeah, yeah. Which I like that one yeah. because yeah. Peanuts like you could see kind of visually Peanuts as an influence yeah. on the comic. Yeah, so. yeah. I like that. So. <laughs> And then they want they want a little bio, something that gives you credibility. Like usually, it's like, why do you, why are you, why are you the right person to write this book? With a comic, I'm assuming you have to have some examples of the artwork too that you have to include with it. Yeah. So I think I think with the I think with the graphic novel, they want like five pages. So oh, that. Okay. Um, well, yeah. We, we we have six hundred plus comics. So. Right. Yeah, but, it's, we, have but we don't we don't have the we well, don't have it formatted. In it's not yeah, it's not yeah. formatted yeah. into a book. But it depends. Every agent wants something different. Yeah, yeah. different different uh, places have different yeah. submission policies. Yeah. yeah, and I the formatting is an interesting thing because with the web, even though like I I know you guys are on webtoons, and with that you can do the scrolling format, which right. can work for. Uh, the pages, but yeah, it's, it's what, what kind of uh, layout are you doing? Do you, do you mix it up a bit? I know on Instagram, when I've seen it, you have them cut into squares, so they slide, but when you actually have them laid out before they're cut into the squares, like what is the format that you have them laid out in for the web? The basic format is just a four panel comic. Again, like originally it was, it was two panels. Right. So it really, I laid it out like a newspaper comic strip with the title over it and our name over it and, you know, really laid out like a newspaper does. I, when I, I, I started formatting it for a book okay. and, you know, took all the kind of titles off of each one. I mean, everyone now, you know, it still has a title on it and everything, but, you know, it, it formatted into a book, it's, it's uh, a little different, but it would still be kind of uh, two by two. Mm-hmm. I think I think that once we get into the book, there should be some splash images to kind of help make some transitions. Oh, so to different to periods. different different periods, but also like just to like I think I think that to, to vary the visual mm. the visual like I think if you just look at the at, at strip strip strip, it might get a little boring. Okay. So that's that was my other vision. Right. So yeah, you I mean, know, you were breaking it up with uh, essays anyway. Yeah, but, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're sure. gonna be putting essays in it. Well, that was my idea. Was that you know we sort of like like the first book is a year is called it's going to be called a year on the couch, and so it's going to be very much you know we did do a comic every day that year, and so it'll be I think almost every day like pretty much every day, and um, you know as we sort of introduce new themes, I wanted to kind of write a little bit about about it like why did we start talking about um, mental health issues and you know sort of like we just talked about. You know, why did I start talking about weight issues? Why did my mother as a dead, a, a, my, the ghost of my mother kind of come in? You know, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. it's, um, it sort of makes a little bit of, of it's just, and it's also a little bit like to give a little bit of a, of a understanding of what our creative journey is, since I think we learned a lot in, in that first year as we sort of developed. And there's something to be said for doing, as you know, doing something every day. You really do learn a lot. I noticed too that you guys have also, I mean, you had talked before that you created a t-shirt shop and then you, you guys also sell prints of the comics. Um, I know lots of people have done that. Like how does that work? I mean, I, I guess I've never tried selling prints. It's one of those things where I'm like, why would anybody want to buy a print of mine? You know, it's <laughs> honestly like uh, I'm way more into drawing the comic or writing the comic than okay. any of the marketing stuff. She wishes I was like way more <laughs> into the marketing stuff into the monetizing it. But uh, you know, I you know, I'm like I'm like, you know, I'm trying to draw the comic every day. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's like it, it's it's a tough thing because um, you know, web comics is great because uh, you you know, you don't have to make the whole graphic novel before and then, you know, try and get it published or publish it yourself before people have gotten their hands on it. You know, you can kind of build up your fan base 
and uh, you know, kind of work out your kinks and 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 you know, like get it out there right away as you're doing it. That part of it is great, but at a certain point, you got to be like, you know, you got to be like, how are we going to monetize this? Right. And we have a little bit, um, and we were hoping to kind of like get to a new level this year. You know, we were like going to have our first con, you know, which would have been, you know, now a couple of months ago. We had a, a an art show that we were getting art ready for. Oh. Uh, at um at a store that has a like a little art gallery Didn't in it, happen. and yeah, and that got canceled. So there 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 were a bunch of things yeah. that should have happened. Uh, kind of during help the pandemic. Us on our monetization. Yeah, journey. right. But hey, you know, we we still sort of are doing things to get geared up for that, and you know, we 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 do some things that make a little bit of money, but um, but we still don't have that uh, machinery going as much as uh, nope. yeah. We have a lot more product than we have, you know, <laughs> money coming in for that product. That can happen to a lot of artists. It's like, yeah, you can come up with the product all right. It's like what what to do with it. What kind of stuff yeah. were you going to do at the, the art gallery? We were going to um, do some large print versions of some of the comics. Cool. Um, it was kind of a, I think we were probably going to do the storyline of my, my mother, just because it was like a very, because of the, the kind of um, store slash gallery it was. And I think we were going to do sort of single panels and also um, the comics, but like kind of blow them up big. Yeah. Um, and then I was also, I was also doing some screen printing oh. of some, yeah, I think some she, stuff. I think, and I think, um, I think you buried the lead. Yeah. <laughs> she learned screen printing. I did. Oh, and nice. Started screen printing some images from the comics onto like hand pressed paper. Yeah. And so they were really cool kind of art pieces. Um, you know, it's it, like there's one over there if you want to grab yeah. it. And I mean, you know, there was also uh, paintings and stuff that I was working on. Yeah. Too. It wasn't a very big space. So okay. we were, we were doing a little bit of screen printing, a little bit of painting, a little bit of just, you know, digital printing of some of the comics, you know, kind of following one storyline. So yeah, it's nice. it's nice. just like, you know, the aforementioned Danny cat oh, wow. on uh, Roomba, which is one of, one of our, yep. it's kind of two of our characters, the Roomba also, you know, we have a Roomba, so it started talking too in the comics. Um, and people loved the, loved that goofy image of the cat riding on the Roomba. So, right. um, you know, she like screen printed that. Uh, and you had never screen printed um, before. Know, it looks fantastic. Yeah, I wasn't in you know, no, I handmade art. Before. It's it's harder than you think. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, especially doing it in your house. Yeah. It's you know messy and yeah. annoying. Yeah, I dabbled in it for like five Actually, minutes last year myself. <laughs> it's, it's one of the it's one of the uh, many like crafts that we. With that one, we stopped doing during the pandemic. You know, she got distracted by. Uh, she actually did the the um, sourdough. sourdough thing. Oh, you did. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she did the sourdough. We started making yogurt. You know, we started doing like making a lot of things in yeah. in uh, quarantine. Yeah, nice. um, while still doing the comic. And then I wanted to ask too, like with your with your artistic background, I was looking um, before we started. I. We had we we're connecting over Facebook Messenger, and I got to see your profile. And one of your uh, previous employments was you were a Flash animator at Nickelodeon. Yeah. What did you What yeah. did you Flash animate, if I may ask? Uh, I started off at Nickelodeon basically just doing kind of ad banners. So, so when you go to uh, nick.com, I worked for the website. Okay. Uh, there's there's like a big window of animation that shows you what's happening on the website in different games that that they're releasing and and what's happening on on TV on Nickelodeon. Uh, and I did that window of animation, and then uh, I did a couple of kind of choose your own adventure kind of stories. Okay. That came Kind of write in ideas and I had to animate them. We did a musical one. Um, and then uh, I did the animation for a TV show. It, it was, they were short animated sequences 
uh, fantasy sequences um, for a live action show which nobody remembers, which is like great because it was a terrible oh, show. Test me. Uh, it, was called, it was called Romeo. It was oh. about a rapper named Lil Romeo. Lil Romeo. Dad, Master P, and the dad was a rapper, and so he's always off touring, and they hire a goofy nanny to take care of the kids. And when Romeo's in trouble, camera zooms in on his eyes, and then you see this animated sequence of what he's imagining, you know, his real-life trouble as sort of a video game. Mm -hmm. And I did, I was the animation director, uh, me and, and two other animators, like we made all these little uh, animated sequences for that. Um, uh, in addition to my regular daytime chores on the website. And then I uh, created and animated the um, avatars for, they had, Nickelodeon had this um, uh, virtual world for kids called Nicktropolis, okay. where kids could make a little character and and customize the skin and the and and the sex and the and the hair and the clothes, and they can make a little room and they can buy stuff for the room and uh, play games with each other and have safe kid chat with each other. And so I made all the uh, characters and their little clothes and things for for that thing. Okay, um, so that was that was Nickelodeon. For First of all, ten years. That explanation of the. <laughs> of the little Romeo thing. I love that you get to explain that and say that like that entire concept is amazing. And, and actually I do remember that show. Didn't watch it, but I'm familiar with it, but I do remember that. And I do remember, Oh, that's amazing. Oh my God. So you weren't doing any of the uh, web series that they did um, the, the, during the, the boom of before the bubble burst, when everybody had online flash cartoons and stuff like you had your ice boxes and you had the uh, oh, uh, wild brain no, and all that. Nickelodeon, yeah. Nickelodeon didn't, really do web series yeah i didn't no, think so. I, I, I did start working on the web and learning flash in that era okay um with, you know it like the dot-com boom it was pretty cool and that is when i got hired at nick you know and things were pretty cool there you know it's like got free lasik surgery and and like what? wild parties and you know you could like all sorts of things it was a good time to work at the internet and you know that all ended Okay. But, uh, yeah, I love I love that. That's a come with us, and we'll give you LASIK surgery. That's awesome. <laughs> that cracks awesome. me up. It's it's what it it actually makes me think. Like if you were to do a TV show, and like these are the things that will happen if you work at a TV station, and like they make stuff up. I love that you just said that that was all true. Um, <laughs> and then you've also done. Uh, I actually had a person who uh, on the show previously who went to the Kubert School of Art. And mm. you're involved with the Kubert School of Art. Uh, she explained that it was, it's a very intensive school. It's very uh, involved. Like there is, basically it's like, if you think you know how to draw, you haven't learned nothing yet. Like it's, <laughs> you don't understand. Yeah. That's art school though. You yeah. Know, it's, it, you know, you, you're, you're like the, cause I went through it too at Pratt. You're, you, you know, you at home, you're the big hot shot and then you get to school and, you know, then everybody's a hot shot, and it, it's hard. And and the students, I mean, they have uh, ten classes, uh, uh, ten different classes a week. You know, ten subjects. So you know, they have ten assignments going at any time. Uh, right now, I'm teaching uh, intro to animation, um, and it's the only animation course they have there. Uh, and I also teach uh, basic drawing. Uh, in the past, I've taught humor and caricature and uh, digital production, which is uh, coloring comics and Photoshop. Okay. So they, they do a little bit of everything. I've taught lettering there, digital lettering. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a very intensive three-year uh, course, and those students are just, like, working hard all the time. You guys both have these other projects that you're doing, but you work on this comic together. Like, how do you decide which one's going to get priority between the fact that you both work together and you're both working on separate things? Like, how do you juggle that? I, it, it just occurred to me, like, it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, you know, you have the things that you have to do, you know, I, I, I have to do my schoolwork when I have to do it. And she, you know, she, she, she works in advertising. Yeah, so she's, she's, yeah she's, she's busy full time plus. Um, 
I mean, that's why in the comic we're always sitting on the couch with our laptops in yeah. front of us because we're constantly doing things. We're, we're, we're never, you know, we, we like bring our laptops with us. We went on vacation in Puerto Rico and, uh, oh, nice. when we got, um, that's when we got our, the iPad pro, uh, because at home I draw on a big, uh, tablet. Um, but you know, we wanted to keep doing the comic, uh, while we were traveling. So when we're on vacation, we're still doing the comic. Uh, so we're working on something constantly at all times. And, you know, in addition, you know, uh, uh dealing with our kids who right. are growing right. up now, right. but right. you know, still, and, and also, you know, like, like dealing with the house and trying to keep it from being a total disgusting mess. And, you know, <laughs> so we're, we're, we're constantly busy. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's a juggle to try to figure out what the priority is. And yeah, I mean, we have another, a side comic that we want to do besides the web comic, a spinoff comic. I love it. it okay. You know, it's like we have so many things we want to do. Um, you know, the, the, the spinoff comic is the cat, uh, Danny, the cat, okay. but it, but he goes on adventure. So it's a little more fantasy based and not reality based. Cause I'm itching to do like draw some monsters and things and also, you know, kind of have something that has a different appeal. Um, you know, cause ours is like a real life thing. So we wanted to do also a fantasy comic too. So, you know, that's something that, again, it's like we're working on it, but, you know, it's just like so many things. Well, that was his idea. Yeah, but. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm writing on a couple other, like. Yeah, she, books, I mean, she's got so, her book, I mean, you know, so but, um, her books. So yeah, wait, yeah. so are you saying you just think of it when, when one of you gets another project, the other one goes, well, I'm going to think of something too then. <laughs> no, we both, we both just have a lot of things we want to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. So. And you said you wanted to uh, draw monsters, and that reminds me. So a lot of the places on the internet where you are, you're, you, you're written down as Frankenstein's artist. Yeah, Frankenstein's and- superstar was my uh, original webcomic. After I left Nickelodeon uh, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with my life, uh, I had been wanting to get into comics. I had, I, I had always wanted to do it but uh, could never kind of get myself to, to, to do it, to finish anything, to commit to something. And for, uh, you know, around that time, there were some webcomics that were getting a lot of attention. And I was like, webcomics, you know, that'll be it. You know, that's something I can, you know, it's like this finite thing, you know, that I can like kind of do and start getting instant gratification for, putting it out there right away. I'll do a webcomic. But for three years while I was at Nickelodeon, whenever I was in a boring meeting, I'm developing it, drawing the characters over and over again, but never kind of took the plunge. And when I left Nickelodeon, she was like, you know, now's the time. Stop developing it. Put it out there. And I did, and that was Frankenstein Superstar, which was about the Frankenstein monster and the Bride of Frankenstein, but they were living in modern-day New York City. And it was still sort of autobiographical, but it was monsters. Um, and I did that for a few years uh, and then started working at the school. Um, that kind of became very ambitious and it's just drawn in a style that's not as easy to do mm. as a web comic, especially if you're doing sort of full pages in addition to, you know, doing your money job and all that other stuff. Yeah. So I put that aside. I still want to bring it back. What I wanted to do is put it on webtoons, yeah, because yeah. it's 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 pretty done. So he, it's just a better place to kind of put yeah. it up. Yeah, I yeah, I just you know, you I just, just want to start doing it. I just I I want to revamp it a little bit, but yeah. Or you could just do it. <laughs> I, I need to. Do it a little bit. It's just it's just it was my first web comic, yes. and it was a little more like uh, very, look at me, I'm doing a web comic. It was very and well so received. It was liked it. people really liked it. A lot of people would love for me to bring it back. Uh, I just. You know, I just always want to like do do a little more and do it a little better. So you know, I I just kind of need a little time to repackage it. And when you say it's well received, that makes me think of another thing. Where I know before you said you guys don't really promote or do the marketing for it, but 
how do you, you have followers where are you, lots of people would be jealous of the fact that you're like, Oh, I put it on there. And all of a sudden you have followers. Like, where are you getting these followers from? Are you doing uh, something? It, was all, it wasn't all of a sudden that we, um, yeah, we, I don't know why I don't, we're not sure like how Instagram was like, we were just putting things on Instagram. Nothing was happening. And then, then all of a sudden, like something happened and everything just kind of blew up and we're not sure why and then actually since the pandemic has started things have really been um like not as not good as good as for us like oh, we, were, we were growing and growing and, and growing and then it started to supposedly the uh the what are they the called algorithm. the algorithm changed yeah. like in 2020 huh. you know everything's bad in 2020 so, so we were growing and growing and growing and now we're just kind of stagnated um, but and, you know, still it's like 20 something thousand followers. Like right. I was going to say your stagnation is still at a pretty good number. <laughs> it's not yeah. Yeah. But, but for some reason, like every once in a while, I'll see in a comment, somebody will say, Oh, I, I, you, you showed up in my feed again. I thought, you know, I, I thought you had disappeared. I thought you had disappeared. You know, or somebody really, will DM me and say, Instagram, you know? me and say, are you, are you guys away? I haven't seen the comic and it's just yeah, not we, serving. Instagram's just not serving it. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we've done really well on Instagram and Instagram, it, you know, it's really great in, I mean, the comic is designed to be read easily on Instagram. Mm -hmm. yeah. but that's why it's, you know, it's why the panels are the shape that they are. It's and and you know why they're all the same shape. She's she's like you know why can't you kind of like vary things you know a bit and which is one of the things I'd like to do with the you know the new comic. But but this is really packaged for Instagram uh, and that's like worked out for us. Um, but uh, Instagram also you know skews very young. And, right. you know, we, we kind of like to find kind of an older readership who can relate to kind of some of the, you know, it's like dealing with, you know, older teenagers and, you know, empty nest issues. Yeah, we get a lot of, my mom's just like that. Yeah, <laughs> which is cute. <laughs> you know, yeah. We love it. Or, but... or, I wish you were my mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know, we, we, we'd like some kind of format that, you know, maybe somebody, you know, more our age, more people our age who can relate to it in that way. You know, might, might see it. I mean, you know, we do promotional stuff. Um, very, we do marketing not, stuff. Very little. But, very but little. we're busy. It's like, just it's like, like Dr. Hill thyself. We, we don't do anything. You know, it's, like I, I'm a marketer by trade and we are not good. We are, we are very lazy. But we are going to start to do, um, I think I'm going to do Facebook. Um, uh, what's it? Marketplace. Marketplace. Like that's our next initiative so that we can start mm -hmm. to actually sell a few things. And I think Instagram will be happy if we start to use their platform a little more. Mm -hmm. So, so hopefully maybe they'll, they'll uh, start to promote us, you know, show us on the algorithm again. As somebody who uses uh, Facebook marketplace to help support himself with all this stuff behind me, um, I started just to try and test it out. Like I sell like old, uh, graphic novel books and toys and all that kind of stuff from like the sixties through the nineties. Um, I love Facebook marketplace. It's fantastic. That's how I get the excuse to collect more things. Like I couldn't justify collecting things anymore. I have shelves all the way. This, this shelf goes all the way across my wall and, yeah. and that's, no. and I couldn't collect things anymore, but now if I sell them, then I can keep collecting and then I don't right, 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 right. You find people marketplace to be a good platform facebook marketplace is a great platform and it's really gotten more and more uh it's improved more and more in the past couple months they've it's been doing good things and i've actually tested out even selling my artwork on there and done a few sales that way so i i highly cool. recommend it it's very easy and also they All offer right. shipping now so you don't have to just do it locally so, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so it's it's pretty cool. I, I do recommend it. That was that was my main point, is I was saying I do enjoy Facebook Marketplace, so I think you really should test it out. Uh, let, cool. me, let me know how it goes, actually. I'd love to hear I'd love to hear I what your that. thoughts on it are. Yeah. And then um yeah. I wanted to mention too, we had a or we had, I had <laughs> suddenly I'm with a group of people here. Um I had a person on the show maybe two seasons ago, his name was John Sanford. And he actually had, he worked in, uh, he worked for like Disney and um, other places. Like he's worked on Disney animation uh, movies and stuff like that. 
but he started a web comic and his story is very similar to yours. And I wonder how many other people that worked in the animation industry or worked for places like Nickelodeon or whatever, he said he would just draw these characters and they'd pass them around during meetings because they were bored. And he suddenly one day just like decided to create a web comic out of it. Cause he's like, I'd like to be in charge of my own comic. So that was right. his whole thing. And he did, right. he, yeah, he had done. So hearing you tell that story, I was like, that sounds very familiar. <laughs> The part of the story that John didn't tell was that, you know, he he just he posted he posted the first comic on Facebook and people were very receptive. So he's like, I'll do another one. Okay. And then so on and so on. But I have heard I have sort of seen other sort of, you know, we follow a few other couples comics and a few other couples comics have done they they did start that same way where somebody just drew something on a whim, threw it up online or. Um, I think um, I think Katana. I think her boyfriend put it up, and then everybody, people really liked it, and then she started to do it. And she's she's quite, she's very big now. Hmm. Katana Chadwick. She's got a few books out now. A couple people from uh, who were working at Nick.com the same time as I did that um, have been, you know, like sort of trying to come out with their own stuff. And one one of my other friend Micheline, who, who yeah. you know, has been doing. Uh, children's books and uh, really uh, fantasy books and um, so yeah it's yeah I mean you know it's like you, you're working in a creative field you know you you often meet a lot of creative people who kind of want to be doing other things um, I mean it's not easy uh, you know uh, you know like I said you know it's it's something I had wanted to do for a long time and uh, it just takes you a while to kind of find the thing that sticks yeah and sometimes uh, it's not what you plan it out to be, it's just something that happens, you know, like our, our web comic, you know, we, you know, we had tried to make something happen, you know, with the both of us, and it, uh, this is something that just, you know, just sort of like lightning struck, and it just started working. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, you know, lots of people want to do these things, uh, anybody could do these things. You know, we live in an age where you know you have uh, the ability to market yourself and the ability to you know uh, 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 prepare things for printing. And and you know, it just like amazes me that you know we can go on vacation in Maine, but I can still uh, completely pencil and ink and 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 letter and whatever my comic on you know like this tablet. Um, but uh, but you know, there's also you know you have to have a lot of will and and uh, do a lot of work uh, and um, and you know keep uh, pushing um, you know keep persevering because uh, it's not easy to be a creative person in you know a world where you also have to pay rent and and, and you know do all those other things. Right. Uh, I mean, honestly, um, a, a lot of our Creative output has been because because of me leaving Nickelodeon. I keep, I keep saying leaving Nickelodeon. Uh, I was laid off. Mm. Um, it was after ten years uh, of being there. Um, so you know, I had a good run there. Leaving Nickelodeon was it was it a under good circumstances, bad circumstances? I guess uh, why would they? I wonder why they would have to do such a thing. It's it's you corporate know, life now. Yeah, yeah. it's just the Way it is now. It is. Just you yeah. know, at, at, at the end of the fiscal year, they have to balance their books, and yeah. that's the way they do it with layoffs. I mean, yeah. not yeah. to make excuses, but I was there for ten years. Right, that's know, what I'm saying. I, I was the last person in my creative group uh, to uh, to be laid off, which is amazing, considering what an antisocial jerk I am. <laughs> you know, I'm really not like a corporate guy. Well, he's better now. I was, yeah. I, I learned my lesson because, you know, I literally took my uh, toy collections, built up literal walls around my <laughs> cubicle, and, and you, know, uh, you know, blocked myself off from people and thought I could kind of get away with that. And art director after art director would warn me, John, if they're looking to do layoffs every year, which they do, you know, they're going to look at the big, dark, creepy guy who doesn't talk to anybody. And, um, and I just ignored them because, honestly... Um, I mean, working at MTV Networks, you know, Viacom, Nickelodeon, you know, it's it's pretty cool. 
Um, and I, I liked it, I appreciated it, but I also was bored, you know, after 10 years, and right. I assumed there was this amazing kind of like freelance artistic life for me out there. Mm -hmm. And then when I did get laid off, I realized, oh, actually, I'm not like a hustler. I'm not the kind of person who's good at kind of, you know, making my way as a freelancer yeah. and um, and kind of didn't know what to do with myself. And my webcomic, the Frankenstein one, was actually about that. The Frankenstein character in my comic, um, he's the Frankenstein monster, he's the real Frankenstein monster, but in reality, Frankenstein, the name, is public domain. Anybody could do a yeah. Frankenstein movie or comic book or TV show, whatever, and so in the comic, um, he had been kind of like, he had had all these endorsement things where there was like a Frankenberry cereal that was like based on him and, and a Saturday morning cartoon show and all these things that he kind of like had little residual checks coming in and then over the years as the economy got worse people realized they didn't have to pay him mm -hmm. so he kind of, it kind of disappeared and he had kind of become complacent and then all of a sudden it's like his wife is like you know what are you going to do with your life you need to get a job and figure out your life and I was in the same position where it's like that mid-career crisis kind of thing you know, midlife crisis, whatever, you know, it's like, like trying to figure out what am I doing? Um, in the comic, he decides to be a superhero, which is stupid <laughs> and it doesn't work. And, um, and so that's what that com that web comic was about. Um, but, uh, you know, it was like very good for me creatively. And I was very happy when it happened. I mean, also, you know, MTV networks back then, I don't know now, you know, when they lay you off, they gave you like a really good package. Mm. And so that was why Lisa was like, you know, you know, you've got some money right now and, and you have some time. This is the time to, you know, make that artistic leap and, you know, try this other thing. And, you know, it was great. But, you know, there's also sort of, I'm, you know, still, like, trying to figure out my life as a working artist. You know, it's a, it's a constant struggle, which, honestly, you know, I'm great at the art. I'm not as great at the money. <laughs> not so, uncommon. I get, you know, it's, but I love uh, that you guys are doing this. I love that you're still pursuing it, even though there's, you know, the world right now. Um, but we do have the ability yeah. to be online, like the fact that I get to talk to you. And then, uh, I, I do want to ask one more thing before we, before we go today, but, um, is there anything else that you'd like to mention or anything that you'd like to tell people about? Like, doesn't have to do anything with what we talked about today, or it could, whatever you want. Like, is there anything you'd just like to mention that you think people should know? Please follow us on Instagram. <laughs> there you go. Marketing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, go out and vote. Go out and vote. Get registered and vote. Get registered and vote. And there's 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 politics in our comic too. A lot of the uh, Instagram people don't like it when it happens, but you know what you gonna do? That we care about it's like a Bernie Sanders poster behind us, but yeah. we're voting. Wear, wear your masks. Wear your masks. You know, we we do a lot of that stuff. Where that somehow that's political now, but yeah, uh, yeah wear the freaking masks and. Uh, but, you know, and do your art and uh, try to be yeah. creative. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah. yeah. Our, our Instagram, which, you know, again, not a marketer, you know, uh, there's actually two of them because we can't figure out how to delete the first one. But it's background noise comic with uh, underscores under it. So it's background underscore, underscore noise, noise underscore, underscore comic, comic, which is not Instagram. Good. But, um, but yeah. And it's on Facebook and, and, um, I, I do it sometimes on Twitter, uh, and medium uh, and it's oh, on okay. medium, which you know, we have a good following on medium. Yeah. Medium is good. Yeah. Medium is, medium is good one way to us. Yeah. Actually for us, we found it a slightly, you know, it's, it's micro, it's micro income, but it is income. Great. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for talking with me today. I'm really glad that I got the chance to meet you. Really great. Really appreciate meeting you too.